Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Mm, that's good. Ah. Today is Thursday, January 12th, 2023. Hope you all are doing well. I had a better day yesterday, a better writing day. Uh, I got like 2,500 words overall. So definitely I'm doing better at um, increasing my word count. I've been working on just trying to do a little better each hour than I did the day before. And gradually working myself up that way. And um, that seems to be working. I know a few of you commented on, uh, you know, how you have done a lot of words in one month, like for NaNoWriMo or something like that. And I wanted to address that just a little bit because, yes, um, I've certainly been able to write a lot of words in one month um, or in one week or whatever. And I probably just haven't revisited it in a while. Um, my best writing year was 2015 and actually 2014 and 2015 were very very close um in 2014 i got almost 560,000 words for the year and in 2015 i got 565,000 words a little shy and then in 2016 i really crashed um and it was miserable i burned myself out is what happened uh, and part of that was a result of, if I can get this number to come up for me, yes, I wrote, in December of 2015, I wrote 74,000 words. And I was finishing a book. I was newly full-time author. Uh, I thought that maybe with being, not having two careers that I could write, I was trying to write 5,000 words a day and I did write 5,000 words a day for a while. And the book I wrote, I think is a good book. It's the edge of the blade, um, which is not my most popular book, but I don't think it's because it's not a good book. Um, and there are some people who really love it, but it, um, the, the protagonist is pansexual. Um, she's a little bit different. Um, the hero is a little bit different too. Uh, and also that was the last book that Kensington did. And they kind of, they didn't even kind of, they punted. They released it on December 26th, but still called it a January book. Reader releasing a book the day after Christmas is not ideal. Um, they, and they did jack shit for it. Absolutely nothing. My editor had left. I had a new editor who was a waste of air and it was, um, yeah. So, so anyway, um, I should revisit that book at some point, but I really think that it's, it's a solid book. It just took so much out of me to write it that fast. And, um, by that summer, I just crashed and I could not write anything for months. And burnout is, is a thing. And so ever since then, I have been working on this idea of productive creativity, sustainable creativity, where I can um, write at a sustainable level without experiencing those crashes, without burning myself out. Because let me tell you, burnout sucks and it takes a long time to come out of. And I was on a panel at the Nebula conference uh, with a few other people, um, but Laura Ann Gilman uh, moderated it and did such a great job because she helped us walk us through um, like how we felt about burning out, what how we knew. And one of the really salient uh, take-home messages from this panel was that in every single case and there were like five or six of us on this panel in every single case none of us knew that we had burned out it took someone else telling us that we were burned out uh, 
we just thought that we were tired, that we were depressed, that we had lost the spark, that we had writer's block. I don't really believe in writer's block, but that was something someone else said. Um, we just, all we knew was that we couldn't write and we didn't know why. And it took someone else saying, you have burned out. Um, sometimes it was a spouse. Sometimes it was a friend. In one case, it was an agent. Uh, and the solution, there were a couple of solutions that we came up with. One of them was not to write that you just have to, that it's like you've burned off that appendage and you have to let it regrow. And by letting it regrow, you have to leave alone. Uh, the other solution, which I find really interesting, was non-monetized creativity. It, being creative in a way that is not attached to money. Because in every case, we were all writing with the idea of income. Um, for me, because I'd become a full-time writer and I was trying to generate income, try to support us with, with the money I was making from writing. Uh, so it was, you know, there, there are creators, um, and I'm thinking of Elizabeth Gilbert who says this, that, uh, that you shouldn't attach your creativity to making money that that'll destroy the creativity. And I think that's a very privileged position to take. Um, if you are, I mean, we all want to get to the point where we can support ourselves with our creative abilities, right? Or with our passions, you know, for those of you out there who are not necessarily, um, active creators in the arts, uh, you know, the things that you love to do, that's how you would like to support yourself. So telling creators not to, not to attach making a living to their creativity is kind of, um, dramatically unfair and not really a reasonable, um, perspective, but having other ways that you are creative that are not attached to making money, that makes a big difference. Uh, and then last year, um, well now like a full year ago, uh, those of you who've been listening for a long time know that I was reading that book, um, breaking the stress cycle, which I think I've referenced again recently that I was trying to figure out ways not to be so stressed. And there are other things in there too, that are really helpful about, um, expectations. What you expect yourself to be able to do has a huge effect on your, uh, how much stress you experience trying to do it. If you understand that it's going to be difficult, then it's much easier on you, uh, when it's difficult. <laughs> but if you think that something should be easy, that you should be able to just dash something off or whatever, and then it's difficult that produces stress. Um, ways to disperse stress include exercise, like releasing that, um, that fight or flight where you basically do your flight and then you go and you be around people who love you, um, animals or people or whatever that gives you a sense of safety and belonging. That's my short pricey of the, uh, breaking the stress cycle. So anyway, um, that is why for those of you who've only started listening recently, that is why I am very careful about how much I push my daily word count. I have found in the past that I can do about 3000 words a day sustainably. I, that may have dropped and I'm still experimenting with that, but I would like to try to get back up to targeting 3000 words a day, five days a week. So, um, so yeah, yesterday was a better day. Um, hopefully today will be a good day. I'm a little bit lagging behind last week because the beginning of this week was not as good. Um, 
Oh, but I've got today and tomorrow, so that'll help. I am going to writer coffee today. Um, I'm excited because Jim read the beginning of Bandits, and he's going to give me feedback. Dorinda read it and loves it. Uh, and then I have notes from Jennifer Eastep, too. So I may this weekend work on doing that last polish of Bandits and get that sent off to Agent Sarah. And then let her look at those first 20,000 words. First, excuse me, act one. So looking forward to this conversation with Jim. Looking forward to having a dolce de leche latte at Cafecito, one of my favorite places in Santa Fe. And, um, oh, that reminds me of something. So, um, so yeah, uh, oh, challenge with writer coffee is that I didn't wake up early enough to do words before writer coffee. I didn't even wake up early enough to get this podcast uploaded before I go. So, alas, I'll have to um, be pretty disciplined about trying to get my words done after, especially since I've got a SOFA board meeting this afternoon. So I'll only have a few hours to write. But sometimes having just a few hours that are pretty hemmed in makes you focus. Uh, I've heard that advice over and over again from many different writers. Uh, there was one who, um, one of my early influences, Ron Carlson, who I don't know what he's doing these days, but he blurbed my first book. He was really a gracious guy and a great teacher, but he used to teach school and he would write his stories in between classes or like during his office hours, you know, if someone didn't come in. And he, so he would write in these like 10, 15 minute uh, breaks that he had. I know people who write over their lunch hour. You know, they have their one hour a day that they write. But Ron Carlson, um, when he and his wife decided, well, it was time for him to go full time. And so he quit his job and she was working and he was home and he said that the house had never been so clean. It was like cleaning the house all the time. And he said, uh, one day one of his friends dropped by and he was cleaning. This is, um, something archaic for, uh, those of you who are old enough, but the, the wall telephone in the kitchen that had the spiral cord, you know, that goes from the, uh, handset to the wall mount, he was washing the spiral cord and his friend said, man, you are lost. And he realized that having all of that time actually was oppressive to him. Whereas he could write better in those interstitial spaces. So, you know, things to think about. I do think, um, you know, being able to write full time doesn't necessarily give you more time to write. I think it is one of the things that's surprising. What it does is it gives you more time to, to refill the well, um, to have a life, to do other things. Um, and I think you just have to get good at managing which, which of those things you're doing. Uh, if you're self-publishing, like I am, especially because I'm managing um, like anthologies that we've self-published too, I'm basically running a small publishing house at the same time. So I have a lot of business that fills my days, plus Sifwa stuff. But incorporating time to, to read, to be creative, to do other things, those are all important too. And I have to remind myself, looking back, um, how much of a difference it made for me not to be having two careers because I used to be working for an environmental consulting firm and that was, you know, it was a full-time career job and trying to have a full-time career or have a career as a writer too. That was, that was a lot. And I know a lot of you out there are doing this, that you are, um, you know, you have small children or you have parents that you are caring for and you have a full-time job that is demanding in various ways. So, you know, trying to fit all those things together, the idea of being able to write full-time, meaning that you don't have another job that you have to do, um, it's, it's easier on you as long as you don't 
do what I did by like trying to write 5,000 words a day or writing 5,000 words a day and then burning yourself out completely. And I didn't burn myself out immediately. I think that's one of the keys too, because you know, people can have a really huge month like that and then be like, oh, well, you know, but then I was fine. You know, I, I didn't have a problem doing it the, the following month. But um, when did I, I'm trying to see on here when I did crash. You know, on Excel, if you hover over, you can see the, the value of that data point, but it's an imprecise art. Yeah, I started crashing in April. Um, I went down, 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 had a big crash in April. Then I really pushed myself to do, um, I did 63,000 words in June. Had to sneeze there. Um, and it was in July. I remember being at the RWA conference and talking to, uh, to Thea Harrison, lovely Thea Harrison. And she, she asked me, how did I like writing full time? And, and I started to cry. And she was one of the people who told me that I was, um, that I was burned out and she had done it to herself. And she said, take care of it now because you will be sad if you don't. And she was, she was absolutely right. Um, I didn't take care of it right then, but by the next month I had no choice. So, um, yeah, general advice. So I think I'll cut it a little bit short today so I can get off to writer coffee. Um, and then see if I can get back and not sit there and chat too long. Although that is part of like having a life, right? And then get back and see if I can get focused and get some words done today. So wish me luck and I will talk to you all tomorrow. You all take care. Bye-bye.